Welcome to Cookbook Club. Today we're going to be talking about Yotam Adelangi's cookbook, Plenty More. Um, Yotam Adelangi um, is a Israeli-born chef who currently has a restaurant in London. Um, Plenty More was a book he co-authored with his team at his restaurant. Um, I chose Plenty More because it really highlights um, you know, fresh vegetables and high quality ingredients. And as we're coming into spring, um, you know, we're seeing more local produce uh, available at the market. Um, and so I really just wanted to highlight what we have available here in Ann Arbor. And um, Adelangi's recipes um, really bring out the best in vegetables. So I'm really excited to um, talk about his cookbook um, Plenty More is interesting um, in terms of how it's sectioned off. So, you know, most cookbooks are divided into, you know, appetizers, main courses, desserts, um, but Plenty More is divided into techniques. Um, so things like roasting, grilling, boiling, tossing. Um, and I think this is a really smart way to section off the cookbook. Um, because a lot of the vegetable dishes, you know, might be smaller plates, so they don't really fit in, for, uh, you know, appetizers versus main course. Um, and also techniques um, really transform vegetables. If you think about it, um, take a carrot for instance. Um, you could roast a carrot, um, you could boil carrots, you could shave up carrots and put it in a salad raw. Um, there's a lot of different techniques. For carrots and each technique is a little bit different and brings out different aspects of the vegetables flavor um, so the way he's sectioned off the cookbook is really nice um, also if you're looking to improve your skills in a certain technique you know this is a great way to find a ton of recipes for that um, so anyway we'll go ahead and start with our first recipe um, in this video we're gonna be making two recipes actually um, the first recipe is Adelangi's um, beet and lentil salad. I'm really excited to make this recipe because it calls for a lot of interesting ingredients. So the first ingredient you need is one and two thirds pounds of beets. Adelangi calls for candy cane beets. Um, if you can't find candy cane beets, you can do a mixture of beets, um, so red and golden beets, or just red beets. I chose to do half red beets and a half candy cane beets. Um, to tell you guys a little bit about candy cane beets, um, they are an Italian heirloom variety of beets. They're a bit milder in flavor, um, and they have a very unique color. I'll show you when we cut one open. Um, but they're just very beautiful. Um, they're best raw. Um, so all but one of the beets you're gonna cook ahead of time, and then one you will keep raw and use it as a garnish for the salad. Um, so I cooked these last night uh, for just an hour boiled. Um, you can do the same, you can make it ahead of time and then just pull it out when you're ready to make your salad. Um, so one and two third pound of beets. Um, you want two kinds of leafy greens. So Adelangi calls for watercress and spinach. Unfortunately, my watercress went um, bad this morning. Um, so I'm gonna be using some local kale. And then this is actually a really interesting leafy green I've never used before. It's called tatso. Um, it's an Asian variety of green um, and you can use it just like spinach. Um, so I'm really excited to give this green a try. Um, that being said, if you want to use spinach instead um, and use the watercress, um, that was the original recipe, so it's going to be fabulous that way. The next ingredient is one cup of poi lentils. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correct. It's a French variety of lentil. Um, and Adelanki calls for these lentils because Poi lentils hold up very well when you cook them. They retain their shape, um, so they're perfect for salads. Um, if you use 
you know, regular lentils that you just get at a grocery store, it'll probably still be good, but it might be a little bit mushier than the original um, recipe intended, but that's fine. Um, Adelenghi calls for two teaspoons of uh, maple syrup. Um, I'm using honey instead. Um, I think it will just give it a little bit of a brighter note in the salad, a little bit more spring, spring-like. Um, salt and pepper, of course. And then um, Adelenghi calls for yuzu juice. Um, and he does mention if you can't find yuzu, which is an Asian citrus, you can use lime in its stead. So I'm gonna be using lime juice today. And then lemon juice. So that's all the ingredients, pretty simple. Um, so let's get cooking. So step one will be to prepare your lentils. So you put them in a pan. You want three cups water for one cup lentils. Thank you, cameraman. You're welcome. <laughs> so go ahead and bring those to a boil. You're going to want to lightly salt this. Not as uh, much as you would salt pasta water um, because the lentils will be absorbing a lot of the water, but not all of the water. So you're going to let this come to a boil. Um, once it's at a boil, you're going to lower the heat and let it simmer for 15 to 20 minutes. The important thing is that you want them to be, you know, cooked, but they should still have a bite. You don't want mushy lentils. So we'll check back in 15 minutes and see how they're doing. Now it's time to cut the cooked beets. So you're gonna cut them in half first and then cut them in wedges. About this size. Prepping the raw candy cane beet. So first you're gonna want to peel this. Okay, so we have our peeled candy cane beet. Um, the next step is to cut it into paper thin slices. This is a perfect job for a mandolin if you have one in your kitchen. Um, however, I'm gonna be trying my best to do it with a knife. Um, we'll see how it goes. So look at that beautiful inside. So when you cook candy cane beets, um, this color just becomes kind of a, you know, monotone pink. You know, it still has a few stripes, but it's not nearly as impressive. That's why if you're using candy cane beets, um, you know, they're perfect raw so you can show off this beautiful color. So while cutting these beets, you want to use um, a claw grip technique. See how the fingers are curved? This is to protect yourself from accidentally cutting off your finger. You want to cut this as thinly as possible. So our lentils are ready. They went for 15 minutes. I went ahead and drained them of all the excess water. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and mix in one tablespoon of lime juice. If you're using yuzu juice, you would do the one tablespoon of yuzu juice instead of lime. Okay, that's about a tablespoon. And then you're gonna do one tablespoon of olive oil. Preferably extra virgin olive oil. So since this is a salad, um, I do recommend using a little bit of higher quality olive oil. Um, you know, if you only have cheaper stuff, that's fine, but um, this is a really perfect place to use, like that nicer olive oil that you might be saving. So we're gonna do a half a teaspoon of salt. 
and a few cranks of pepper. And then you're gonna mix this all together. So now um, you're going to pop the lentils in the fridge for about 20 minutes and let them cool down. Um, this will also give the chance of the lime juice and olive oil to really blend together. So um, go ahead and throw this in the fridge. the salad together. The lentils are at a good temperature. So we're going to add another tablespoon of lime juice or yuzu if you're using yuzu. And two tablespoons of oil. I know what you're thinking that, oh, I already added oil and lime juice, why'd I have to add it again? Um, keep in mind that this is also the dressing for the beets and the leafy greens. So now you're going to add your beets. The cooked ones. The cooked ones and the raw ones. We'll leave some for garnish. And then you're gonna add two teaspoons honey or maple syrup. I'm using a half a teaspoon um, spoon right now, so I'm doing four. So next is one and a half tablespoons of lemon juice. Okay, and now you're gonna toss this to combine. Do I have anything to toss it with? Just use a fork. <laughs> or maybe tongs, tongs will be easier. So we went ahead of salad, um, had to get a slightly larger bowl. Um, and the next step is the most important, taste. You wanna make sure you don't need to adjust the seasonings at all. Go ahead and get a nice big bite. <laughs> don't film me. <laughs> this might not be a pretty bite. <laughs> Little bit more salt and maybe a little bit more citrus juice too let's do lime so once you have the flavor where you want it it's time to go ahead and plate up. And 
using the leafy greens to dot the top. Um, since I used larger leafy greens than he called for, I'm actually going to do a bed of leafy greens underneath. So get a generous helping of leafy greens. A spoonful of the salad. Now to finish, put a few candy cane beads on top. Finish with a drizzle of olive oil. And Adelangi calls for yuzu powder. Um, instead of yuzu powder, I'm actually going to top it with sumac, which is a Middle Eastern spice. It has a very citrusy taste, which makes me think it's going to be a perfect replacement for the ground yuzu. Cheese. So there you go. A beautiful, nutritious salad that really highlights some seasonal produce. Um, I hope you enjoy um, and check out um, some of Adelangi's other recipes. Hi everyone. Um, so the first recipe we're going to start with today is Adelangi's honey roasted carrots with tahini yogurt. Um, so if you want to come a little bit closer, I can show you what ingredients you'll need. Okay, so let's start off with the ingredients. Um, the recipe in the cookbook is a serving size of four people. Um, I decide to half the recipe because there's only two people in my household. Um, as you're making this for your own family, feel free to double or even triple um, the recipe I'm using right now. So you'll want six uh, large carrots. Um, for seasoning the carrots, Adelangi calls for cumin seeds. Unfortunately, I'm going to be using ground cumin. Um, you know, as you guys probably know, now's not the great time to be running to the store. Um, he also calls for coriander seeds. I don't even have ground coriander, so we're going to go a little bit experimental and use garam masala curry powder. Um, in this little baggie. Um, uh, of course, you'll need honey to make honey roasted carrots. Um, for the sauce, um, it's pretty simple. It's gonna be whole milk, Greek yogurt. You do not want sweetened or flavored. Um, tahini, um, lemon juice, and he calls for one garlic clove. I really like garlic, so I'm doing two garlic cloves. And then finally, you're gonna want some fresh cilantro um, to garnish. So those are all the ingredients. Um, like I said, if you have cumin seeds and coriander seeds, um, use that instead of the spices that I am using. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Yes. All right, time to peel the carrots. Nice and peeled. Okay, now that the carrots are all peeled, um, we're gonna wanna cut them into batons. Um, so, basically, if you see the size of this one, um, we're gonna maybe wanna cut this in half and that'll be a good size. So something around this size will be easy to eat. Um, you know, if it's not exactly this size, it's not a big deal. It's just whatever you prefer to eat. So these are what your carrot batons should look like. Um, depending on the thickness of the carrot, you might just have to have it. You might quarter it um, to get them look like, looking like this. Preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so we're going to make the honey spice mixture um, that we'll coat our carrots in. So it's gonna be one and a half tablespoons of honey. Again, keep in mind that I have the original recipe. So if you're making a bigger, for a bigger crowd, add more honey. 
I do not have enough honey in this jar. Just give me one. Cheese. We're gonna do one tablespoon of olive oil. We're gonna do a half a tablespoon of um, the garam masala or the coriander seeds if you're using that instead. And last, we're gonna do half a teaspoon, oh, I'm sorry, three-fourths of a teaspoon of cumin. Probably about three-fourths. Something you don't want to forget is your salt and pepper. So we're going to do half a teaspoon of salt. And a generous grind of pepper. Now we're going to mix this up. Mmm. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to coat the carrots. gonna use my hands. The fork is not helping. <laughs> oh man. This is a this would be a fun activity for kids. Um get your hand away. <laughs> I find it's a little bit easier just to use my hands. Um, if you don't want to get your hands dirty, you know, maybe tongs would be a good option. It's just a bit difficult with a fork. So go ahead and mix this till every carrot is pretty well coated. Okay, so we're gonna spread these out. You don't want to overcrowd the pan. Make sure each carrot has the space to breathe. That should be good. So if you want to show them the spacing, we can drizzle some of the leftover should be delicious. So we're gonna throw these bad boys in the preheated oven. Again, it should be 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, they're gonna go for 40 minutes. Um, and Otto Lange recommends um, uh, shaking them around a little bit once or twice during that process. So I'll probably check them in about 20 minutes and just give them a good shake and maybe turn them around a little bit. So, in we go. go! So we're gonna go ahead and make the sauce. Um, so you're gonna need six tablespoons of Greek yogurt. I went ahead and portioned it here. You do one and a half tablespoons of tahini. This looks like good tahini. It's about a half. I went ahead and crushed two tablespoons of, or two cloves of garlic. Again, this is more than the original recipe called for. I just really like garlic. Do one tablespoon of lemon juice. Okay. 
Okay. And then you're gonna mix this all together. It's really good. Go. And don't forget the salt. Um, it's just to taste. I'm gonna do a pinch or two. You don't wanna go overboard, but uh, salt will help bring out some of the natural flavors in the yogurt and tahini. So that should be good. Um, so you're gonna let this sit in the fridge while your carrots are cooking. Um, Doing this ahead of time will give the sauce some flavor, uh, <laughs> give the sauce some time to have the flavors mixed together. Um, so go ahead and pop that in the fridge. Uh, your carrots are in the oven and I'll see you in, in 40 minutes. <laughs> Caught red handed. Supposed to wait till the video's done. <laughs> Okay, so we pulled the carrots out of the oven. Um, they are perfectly done. Um, we're gonna serve them with the uh, tahini yogurt, some freshly made challah, um, and some uh, torn up cilantro. Um, so this is a delicious side um, to any meal. Um, you can mix or match it with some of Adelenghi's other recipes. Enjoy!